Hey everyone, Ready Rex here, and today I'm going to be talking about Billie Eilish's new album, Hit Me Hard and Soft. So this came out, give or take, about two months ago. I think it was May 17th, but I just listened to it for the first time about a week ago, minus a couple of the songs that I'd heard previously through other means like TikTok. Uh, so I listened to it on a live stream. I said I would come back and leave a review, and that's what I'm going to do today. Overall, I think this album was a pretty solid album. We've got some solid tracks on here throughout. Uh, there's a couple that I'm not as big on, but there's also some that I really, really like. I think as an album, it's probably her best like put together album. All the songs fit in really well together. There's a nice flow from top to bottom. There's only one song that I think disrupts it a little bit, uh, maybe two, but it's not enough to feel like the flow has been broken. So Lunch, I think is a bit strange in between Skinny and Chihiro. And then I think the diner is also slightly out of place. Although you could argue that La Amor de Ma Vie is also slightly out of place because I think those two songs are some of the more different songs on the album. But like I said, the flow definitely isn't ruined. I think they still fit in really well. They're just slightly different compared to the majority of the songs on this album. So I think Chihiro, Birds of a Feather, The Diner, Bittersweet, and Blue. Honestly, we could throw in Skinny in there. I think those are my favorite ones. Hell, we'll, we'll throw in Lunch too. I think Lunch is pretty good. That one, that one grew on me though. Uh, I did not like Lunch when I listened to it the last week. Well, not that I necessarily didn't like it. I just thought it was a little strange <laughs> compared to some of the other songs, especially lyrically. The lyrics are just like really taboo <laughs> compared to anything else on the album. They definitely stray into that taboo train of thought a lot more than any of these other ones. So it just felt a little strange. And I don't know, first time listen, I was like, this was very unexpected. But now when I come back to it, I think... The production is really good. I like the flow of that song. It's a bit stranger than some of her other stuff, but I ended up really liking that one later on. It grew on me quite a bit. So, I mean, that's pretty good to have, <laughs> so like, what, seven favorite songs out of the 10 on there? Because the only reason I don't want to put the other three on there is because I just can't see myself wanting to listen to those by themselves, like, at all. Uh, like, Wildflower the Greatest and La Amour de Ma Vie, I think, are much better suited to the album. And honestly, I'm just not as big on them. They're not quite as much for me. I think they might be a little too slow or something, especially Wildflower. I'm not huge on acoustic songs, and that one, I think, hits the acoustic bass uh, for the most part. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not huge on those three, but I still like them. I think they fit really, really well into the album. I think the album also does a great job at using several different styles of music while keeping them all under a general umbrella of sound. Like, they all feel familiar. They all match each other in some way or another. I think the theme is a bit on the darker side. If I had to think of music as, like, light or dark, I, more on the darker side. And I think that a lot of that comes from tones being sort of slower. Yeah, I guess they're just not, like, super energetic. They're not the most energetic songs. So I do want to interject myself just for a second. So I realized that the diner and lunch, and you could argue a couple other ones, are a bit more on the energetic side and a bit more fast-paced. But I think even then, relative to a lot of other music, they're still on the slower side of things, which is what I was generally trying to get across. Okay, we'll get back to it. And they feel like they're really full of emotion, which to me kind of builds that darker theme. And then when you take the album cover in mind, I think they really, really fit with that album cover. I can't quite put my finger on it. We talked about it a bit on live and just something about a lot of these songs really does match that album cover. And that album cover in itself makes me think of like a darker tone, a darker feeling. And when I say darker, I don't necessarily mean like, I don't necessarily mean something evil or super sad it just is very mellow and slow paced and really draws out emotions going after that i think that this album is maybe her most emotionally tied album based on what i can tell i'm not going to like the lore of billy eilish i don't know very much about that but it felt a lot more emotional than her previous projects to me i think the closest would be happier than ever which was her previous one so that makes sense i don't think when we fall asleep, where do we go was super uh, emotionally tied, at least to this extent. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. But this one really felt like it was taken up another level. And then, of course, Don't Smile at Me. I think that one was the furthest from being like super, super emotionally tied. Um, and keep in mind, again, I'm not I don't know the Billie Eilish lore, <laughs> so I can't really dive too deep into that. But just based on the songs themselves and the content, I, I feel like they just get deeper 
emotion wise the newer the album is each each album feels like it has a greater meaning to it and then it has a greater overall theme when like when we're talking about themes here too in comparison to the other albums the theme of this album felt very very solid it felt like it was really well put together again the closest would have had to have been happier than ever happier than ever would have had to have been the closest because when we go back to where do we sleep where do we go i think that one's a bit more scattered same with don't smile at me i think both of those are much less cohesive and more all over the place and i think a, a mix of those reasons combined leads me to think that hit me hard and soft really is billy eilish's magnum opus of a project at least for now it seems to be just the most well thought out project she's put out so far it is a very very solid project that is very very cohesive and the theming just seems to fit really really well that being said though i think my personal favorite probably is don't smile at me i just think some of the songs on there are a lot more catchy and they fit my style a bit more but it, like when I really sit down and think about it, I just think that this project, again, is it's the most cohesive. If you want to listen to any of the projects like as a whole it, rather than individual songs, I think Hit Me Hard and Soft is your best option. It's your best bet. It's just it sounds so good as an entire project. If you're listening to it just one song at a time, like separately, I don't think you're going to enjoy it nearly as much as you would if you were to listen to the project in full the album really is like one big song itself and that just comes down to it being put together so well when an album is that cohesive that it really feels like you need to listen to each song on the album that's really really good for an album maybe it's not good for your playlist because it's harder to throw these songs in there but that doesn't keep it from being a great great album and I would say that I was pleasantly surprised, but honestly, I'm not super surprised that I liked this project. I tend to like a lot of Billie Eilish's songs. This definitely was no, no different than those. While it was pleasant, yeah, I was not surprised that I enjoyed it. I will say I was surprised that it was this cohesive. I wasn't expecting it to be incohesive because the previous album was pretty cohesive itself, but this one took that a step up. I think a lot about this album is really just taking things from previous albums another step up. She continues to do this, and honestly, I'm just hoping that this trend continues because that's it's really impressive to get this far and have each project be a definite step up from the previous one. And yeah, I'm excited to see where she goes after this. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe. That super, super helps out the channel. If you have any thoughts about the songs, the album, me, my thoughts on it, make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know. I check out all of my comments, so I will get to them eventually. And if you want to stay connected with me on other platforms, I am on TikTok and Discord. I'll have links down below in the description for those. And I live stream too, every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Central Time and every Monday day at 12 p.m. Central Time. I either do album reactions or individual suggestions. Music suggestions are free during those live streams. So yeah, make sure to check those out. And I also have a second channel called The Strat Rat. Check that out too. I'll leave a link down below in the description to that. Thank you so much, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.